and almighty. I do wish we at the very least, oh, I was gonna say have some poison darts. We do have six. So we could try and take these friends on. I will instead engage with this wolf, I guess. Hello, pal. I do hear that dogs are Pound Tonga's best friend. Hmm. Unfortunately, this buddy's in deep water, but we can start by tossing some rocks. See if we get lucky. We don't, really. We can heal up nicely. Let everyone come to us. We made a decent amount of noise with the lightning bolts arcing across the dungeon here. There we go. I was about to say this is a slightly safer position. Oh boy, was I wrong. So, we could step here. If the two-head ogre notices us on the move, they will step next to us. And that's going to be rough. We will be able to run away without taking hits, but they'll be right next to us and we'll be hinging on random energy to give us the space that we need. Alternatively, we could just start stepping downwards, hoping that these electric eels aren't going to immediately murder us. But that way we can go the long way around, leaving the ogre behind. Let's do it, because they do indeed notice us. But there we go. We don't get absolutely fried by the eel, and we'll just immediately head back to our stairway. Try not to make any mistakes in our movement there. Oh jeez. Does mean that this stairway is potentially safe once more. Just a bunch of orc key pals. Wow, how did... That's got to be the same two-headed ogre, right? But you made it all the way from up here to down here? That wouldn't have just been noise on its own. We also definitely got unlucky with the padding. As long as enemies are far enough away, you don't have to worry about even a full bar of noise here calling them in. Of course, if they just happen to wander a little bit closer. Can happen. This is a much better setup for us. I'm happy to take on just a few orcs here, get us some more early experience, plus one hand axe of draining. Hmm. I might pick this up. I don't know if we'll use it, but it is kind of nice. Before you get good skill training here, it can be nice to downgrade to a hand axe, especially if it just has a minor enchantment. Because while the damage will be worse, our accuracy goes way up with that buddy. Even just at a base state here, we have a plus zero to our hit bonus versus a plus three, now a plus four thanks to the enchantment. Plus draining is a pretty solid brand for the early game. It can help make certain early threats slightly more manageable at the very least. Do I want to fight the troll? I feel... Like, I'm going to have to fight either the troll or the two-headed ogre, and this is the one that we would prefer. Hits pretty hard, don't get me wrong, quite hard indeed. If we see this, it's a total of 50, so two hits is all it might take. But we're running out of options, unfortunately. I mean, trolls up here. Ideally, two-headed ogre is still somewhere in this area. So we could finish this round robin ring around the rosy and head back to this stairwell now. Slowly but surely working our way into a slightly safer position. It's a bit scary to leave those friends behind on the floor here because we don't want to be escaping a dangerous situation on the next floor of the dungeon and immediately run face first into one of them. But, yeah, drain the troll definitely could work out. If we have to fight it, we will be switching over to the hand axe for sure. Getting that drain going as much as possible. Jeez, you buddies are really energetic today, walking all around the dungeon. So, in the grand tradition here, we'll keep changing up our approach. This time around, let's manually tell ourselves to go down here. We'll keep dancing until we absolutely have to fight with one of them. And then we'll start dealing with what that may entail. But 
I meant to do before I got surprised by the two-headed ogre and kind of taken aback once more. We have a bunch of ID scrolls, so we should definitely read a few of those, see if we can't get ourselves some decent options here. Scroll of Torment is interesting. We could potentially try and take out one of these buddies with that. I'm going to do a quick check at some of the mental calculus here. The troll doesn't have that much health, and it would bring us into one-hit range. I'm not going to use Torment on them. The two-headed ogre. Let's take a look at their total health. 55. Still probably not worth it. If we come across an early enemy with a huge health pool, but taking out half of our own health won't put us in one hit range, it might become worth it to drink that, or to read that scroll, rather. Alternatively, if we have some really good ranged options, like some solid wands, we could torment and start blasting and see if that gets us into a position of power. But for now, keep identifying. Scrolls of fear, that's huge. That will definitely help us out in a potential escape situation. Magic mapping is just good to have, and our last scroll of identify. Nice, gives us scrolls of blinking. That was a very lucky few rolls on the ID table. Hmm. Still don't have too many poison darts, but if we can bring the eel here. I think I will risk tossing a couple this way. Of course, those lightning bolts do create a decent amount of noise which we don't want to deal with. That might draw the attention of our strong, hungry friends. But ideally, get some better rolls on these poisons. I don't know why they're retreating. A lot of times enemies will retreat if they realize that it's not possible to hit you. But generally, if they're able to slam you with lightning like this, they'll keep doing so. There we go. Managed to get this buddy Pretty poisoned up. I think I might rely on that and hope that that's enough. So we'll back up. And we do get the message you feel a bit more experienced. So we managed to take out one of them with our poison darts. That's awesome. What about your friend? What we'll do here, I think, is maybe go with heroism. That'll give us a little bit of score to our throwing skill here. And then, actually real quick, I'm gonna pop into my axe and set the skill target so we don't overtrain our axe skill here. And equally so with the kite shield. But we'll try and use this extra throwing prowess to toss a few rocks. That skill training allows us to throw faster as well as hit harder. Unfortunately, the eel retreats. Oh geez, there were two of you. Why are you being so so dodgy today, Eels? I don't like. I don't like at all. Probably keep going with the stone thing. With the poison darts, we were making sure to use F and then period so that they landed in this slot even if we missed the Eels. With our rocks, I don't care too much if we toss some of our stones into deep water. So we are being a bit more lazy here. Unfortunately, not getting good rolls. I don't even know if we have a good enough throwing arm at the moment to take them out without heroism. Hmm. I do not like this floor. Here's what I think we'll do. Ah, never mind. I immediately change my tune. I was hoping to potentially just skip this floor in its entirety for now, hop downstairs right up here and maybe skip out for now. Unfortunately, all the noise that we created with the crackling of electricity did lead the two-headed ogre right to our doorstep. So we're just gonna run away, taking a bunch of free hits from the hound here, but that's okay, definitely manageable. Perfect. And now, oh, excuse me. I want to, oh, I'm pressing the wrong buttons here. I didn't even know you could zoom in and out like that. We don't want to use shift, just want to use our square brackets to peek down. I believe we left this ogre at this stairwell. Perfect. So, ring around the rosy like we do. 
And hopefully this time we'll create slightly less noise, get a bit luckier in the random roaming path of our friend. And maybe find another one of our downstairs that we can put off this trouble, shove it off down the road, and maybe not have to deal with these strong enemies quite yet. Wolf, I'm okay with fighting. We've at least taken out one of you already. Perfect. Any free experience we can possibly get. We'll even just toss a rock at our orc friend. Perfect. Definitely off to a start here, to say the least. Is it good? I'm not too sure yet. Here we'll figure it out pretty quick. Definitely some scary monsters, but hey, by the time we get to D9, that's at least totally expected and acceptable. Being very careful with our movements. I don't like how close we're getting to returning to our two-headed ogre's stomping grounds, so let's head this way instead. It's usually nice to be able to take advantage of the auto move, of course, but when emergency measures are placed into effect, we definitely just want to start walking a bit more intentionally. Let's not end up anywhere we'd rather not be. Just play it safe here. We have a really good start in terms of our poison resistance armor and the early buckler protection. So I'm doing my very best here to preserve what advantages we gained and put in an abundance of caution, even more so than we otherwise might. Wow, we've explored most of the floor here. This downstairs was a hatch. This one up here was real. Oh, there was one that we passed that I just wasn't paying attention. Okay. I think I will head to this downstairs. We'll skip the rest of this floor for now. Come back when we're in a slightly better position. Hopefully, we don't have to retreat up a stairwell that puts us into danger. Oh my gosh, what the heck are you doing here? Oh no. With a Bardiche? Oof, that's painful. Well, we don't at the moment have any unavoidable damage that we can put down. Besides a scroll of torment, that's not quite going to cut it. This friend is also pretty fast here, so this is a very bad roll in terms of our out-of-depth monsters. Hmm. I'm tempted to immediately read a teleport scroll, hope that it places us somewhere far away from our new friend. If we have to fight them, we could just take haste potion, even add a might potion to that. We have about a 50% chance to hit them. It is going to take a few hits. They have 60 health, more than both of those critters we left upstairs. I would rather fight a troll than this friend. So I will do an early teleport. Take me far away, please. That's far enough. Need to get into charge range with the centaur here. We want to kill the centaur, and then we can actually lead the rest of our friends to a slightly better position. Fortunately, this kobold just has poison darts and not curari ones. We can lead them into a hallway. Didn't realize this was a dead end. Probably should have been paying slightly better attention in that regard, but should be able to handle this badge at least. End of the day, we do have a teleport scroll or a couple in our storage here, so not completely out of options, even if that went horribly. Okie dokie. Back on the road we go. I think we can take an unseen horror, even if it's this early. We at the very least have seen invisible, which negates their greatest advantage against early players. And on top of that, Okawaru is honored by that kill, so we get extra PD as well. Up to two pips. Oh. Accidentally let ourselves be taken into this terrible spot. What the heck is this area? Fireball, bad. Banishment, very bad. At 
least you're at max range. I mean, jeez, oh, don't accidentally walk towards them. Hmm. I guess blink could bring you a lot closer. Oh my gosh, I was about to say, please don't banish me. Silence would have been a great idea. Unfortunately, we weren't close enough, so it wouldn't have hit them right away. And the very first thing they did was cast us into the abyss. <laughs> oh me oh my. We are not suited to handle this area. We only have two teleport scrolls, so we don't have a lot of escape options. I gotta tell you, level 9 is not when you want to be down here. Even if we make it out, we're going to be right next to that friend. I'm going to switch off our resist corrosion for resist fire, just in case we run into any wizards here. But everyone pray for poor old roll greed with me now. <laughs> it's a lovely day for a vacation. Indeed, they know I was thinking the same thing. I heard that the abyss is nice this time of year. Pulled into a different region. Okay. Not the end of the world. We didn't exactly see anything there. Okay, way leading deeper into the abyss. Gotta tell you, not what we were looking for. We'll just keep it moving here. Unfortunately, the downsides of this are kind of, a, I was gonna say twofold, but really multifold. <laughs> because not only are we subject to a lot of scary monsters, but on top of that, we're unlikely to be able to kill a lot of the things here. We're gonna be running away a lot. And Okawaru, not a huge fan of that. Just wandering around, doing absolutely nothing. Not great. But of all the things that we could run into, Nikoksek isn't the worst. Slightly more manageable defenses in terms of our ability to overcome them. Slightly less damage than a lot of the scary critters we'd find. I think this fight we do take as much as I hate it. Don't malmutate me too far, please, sir. Just feed on our intellect, that's okay. Oh no, that's a bad mutation. Downstairs to assert dominance? Oh, maybe we should have tricked the game into giving us an exit out. How long have I been playing DCSS? Um, on and off over quite a long period of time, something like 12 years. I was definitely playing pretty early on. The game was in a much different state back then. But haven't always been playing consistently. This last little stretch here, we've been playing a lot more, and I feel like it's greatly improved my, my ability and my odds of winning. But this is too bad. Both of these are monsters that we expect to see pretty much everywhere in the Abyss, and unfortunately, slightly stronger than we'd like to deal with, especially given the fact that we started this out by already being damaged by our mutator pal. So I think I will read an early teleportation scroll. Azime is also bad. Don't want to lose our ability to heal. Just need to spend a few more turns. Please don't take too many hits. These buddies are fast, so they are going to be getting hits even as we run away. This is why we read an early teleport scroll. We took a big hit and are no longer able to read scrolls. Not great. Oh my gosh. Do I just have to fight one of you? Can't just keep running. We only have one more teleport scroll. Not great. In general, we're going to be full emergency measures this entire fight. Hmm. Or not even this entire fight, this entire fight really being down here. So you, I think, my friend, might just have to take on. Gonna drink a potion of haste? Oh, there are two of you. In that case, I'm tempted to use our haste to just run. Unfortunately, in the abyss, we're fairly likely to run into more friends. But at least gonna run until we find ourselves in a hallway. Then I'm going to Heroism. Of course it doesn't work. A 10% not hitting when we need it. There we go. Scroll of Heal Wounds, or Potion of Heal Wounds, rather. And let's go for it. We could also Berserk, but that's very dangerous. The period of time after the fight where we're slowed, pretty sketchy. But one more Heal Wounds potion. I'm also going to take a Potion of Might. 
Ooh, they also might themselves. Don't like that. Thank you, Okawaru, for being honored. I appreciate that. Can I be gifted ammunition? <gasps> Gateway leading out. Okay, this is kind of sketchy. I want to take some turns to heal. I also kind of want this helmet. But if we spend any extra turns here, we might get swarmed by enemies. We might be teleported away, which is kind of the nightmare situation. Alternatively, if we leave now, we are hasted, we are mited. Ideally, the wizard will be right next to us and we can immediately read a scroll of silence that is actually in range to hit the friend. And then we should be able to kill the wizard, especially before they abyss us once more. I don't know if I even want to risk the six turns. I guess less than six because of our haste. It would probably take about four or something like that. Oh, we can't read a scroll. <laughs> You're right, Eggly. So you know what? We need to waste some time. I'm going to pick up this helmet. I'm going to walk back. Gonna wait, 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 wait. Don't teleport me away. Do lose our haste, which is too bad, but I need my ability to read scrolls. Come on. Don't screw me, game. There we go. Let's leave. Dang it. The wizard is not close enough. And, oh, Skeletal Warrior, what are you doing, game? Why? What did I do to deserve this? In that case, I can't really afford to spend any turns. As we saw, we got really unlucky last time, and any, even a single turn in range of this, which is all of sight, was enough to absolutely obliterate us. Don't have any uh, fog scrolls either, but I'm glad we waited out our negative scroll because I think we will just employ extra precaution here, use a blink scroll, and get out of here. We could go for a fear scroll, crossing our fingers. This buddy won't be affected, but you might. But no, we're gonna play it as safe as humanly possible. Blink out, run, run away. What a ride these last couple floors have been. I'm even gonna head up. No, I don't even, why am I? Game. I shouldn't have tried to heal up down here. I should have just gone up and healed upstairs. I was worried that we were gonna run into the two-headed troll. <laughs> Surviving that banish was impressive. Wait till we do it a second time. <laughs> Once more into the breach. And this time we're on Abyss 3. Do I have any mutation pots? We could. We could start quaffing random potions here. I hate this. Starcurse Mass is really bad for us. Of course, everything that we run into down here is going to be. But I don't think I can take you even fully buffed up. It's just going to be far too many turns. So, teleport scroll. We are in a, a dead end, unfortunately, which is also bad. I could do something like amnesia, or not amnesia, but rather ambrosia. Spend a few turns healing while we are forced to wait anyway. <laughs> Free rune, you're not wrong. We're very lucky. Luckily, we read those before the silence came over us as well. Come on, teleport me. Yes. Are those? These look awfully similar to the rune tiles. It'd be stupid if we were able to, but hey, we have no teleport scrolls. But we cannot take a rune vault either. So let's check you one more time. Covers ground quickly, I was afraid of that. So even a haste and run away isn't gonna cut it here. Oof. Fear also doesn't do anything for us. We could use our last blinking scroll. I think we might just have to fight you. I do not like this. Not one bit. We'll haste though. Heroism would help out here, bringing us pretty dang close to Mindalay with our axe and would give us enough shield training 
Actually, no, we already have enough shield training. I forgot we're using the buckler now. Let's turn that off, change it out for invocations temporarily. 70 health, hey, on this enemy. You're not affected by silence, are you? No, just anti-magic, unfortunately. Didn't even have time to put our helmet on. Unfortunately, this is slightly my fault. We should have just ran away from that wizard, gone up the stairs while we had the opportunity. I didn't think we'd get banished instantaneously, even if they did find us. Unfortunately, if we start fighting here so close to the rune vault, I think we're going to call a lot of attention down on our heads. Hmm. I'm going to walk away a little bit. Deeper into the abyss. What's the trade-off like here? We get away from the mutagenic star, but we're going to be facing scarier enemies down there. So do you know what? I'm just going to run. Turns out we might actually be faster than them with haste. So at least there's that. Not if we run into a dead end. Completely rejects... Body completely rejects all healing from potions. Okay. I mean, we didn't have any more heal wounds at least. Gosh darn it. Dead end. You know what? We're a little bit away from the rune vault. And drink might. Gonna hero up. No time like the present. Ouch. Yeah, each and every one of those hits is gonna hurt. We can't heal, hey? Well, at the very least, limited options just means there are not too many ways that we could go about this wrong. I think we just have to get a bit lucky. 30% chance for them to evade us. These force lances are the main issue. Yep. Well, I think this is the end of Roll Greed. <laughs> Can't read scrolls. Can't drink any kind of healing potion. I don't even know if it's possible for us to roll well enough to escape this situation. We had a good ride, right? We had a good run at it. Survived one turn? Can we survive two? What else could we do? Could randomly drink a potion, I guess. In fact, that might have been better than wasting one turn with a regular attack. I'm gonna drink a potion. Not what we needed. If we get a mutation potion, I guess, no, we can't lose this though, unfortunately, because that's a temporary mutation. Could lose this, but I don't think that, that would immediately remove the negative scroll effect from us. Come on, I need haste back. We blocked the Lance of Force. Okay, I lied before when we have no options, because unfortunately, there are some options. And I'm probably spending way too much time analyzing a run that's just gonna die like that. But we could, again, try and escape this friend. The range on this is just three. So as long as we can stay out of sight for just long enough, we can get out of range of that. Cross your fingers and pray with me. Ooh, urge to shout is really bad. Because unfortunately, we don't want to call attention to ourselves. Probably going to die anyway. I'm trying to continually turn corners where uh, this buddy will lose sight of us. I think we're out of options in that regard, though. We're almost out of range. Out of range of porcelains. Oh. Oh. Dang it, that was, that was a bad step. Let's head this way. Gateway deeper into the abyss. This is a weird one. Might want to actually take this. Unfortunately, this friend will get a free hit and might just kill us. Starker's mass, that's really bad. Please don't shriek, friend. As soon as our haste runs out, we're in trouble. Of course, even if we run into another enemy, we're in trouble. There are a lot of bad case scenarios here. 
Oh, I might have wanted to turn off auto pickup. Might not be able to afford even a single wasted turn. Oh gosh. Causing too much noise. We feel ourselves slow down. Crap, you're catching up to us and you're gonna hit us and hurt. Well, we're spending everything we can, whatever we've got to even potentially survive. Oh, I think we're dead. This friend has a smite ability. Neither of you, I guess you can be feared potentially. You cannot, actually no, you're demonic so you might be excluded from that. You feel a little pissed off, you feel angry. Very fitting temporary mutations to be hit by. Again, I'm spending way too much time debating stuff here. It is very fast. I don't even think I can run away from you. Could Phantom mirror you? Let's do it. Oh, right. Then it gets blinked right away. That's not good. Don't smite me. Don't smite me. This thing's caught up to me. Our system still rejects healing potions, I believe. Controllable. Wait, does it not? Yes, potions cannot restore your health. So we unfortunately don't really have any options here. What are your chances of hitting us? 63%. Never didn't have it. Oh my gosh. How am I even still alive up till now? There we go. Okay. We had a good try. It was a good run using everything at our disposal to uh, do our very best to get away. We did have one summoning scroll that we didn't know about that could have maybe gotten us out. Jeez. That was quite the run in Abyss 3 on a level 10 character, I agree. But hey, we pulled all the softs we could. I feel pretty good about that. I mean, ideally, I should have gone up those stairs immediately and healed upstairs uh, instead of even risking a single turn with that wizard in line of sight because, hey, these bad rolls can happen. And I can't blame bad rolls because we knew it was available, we knew it was an option, and we should have risked running into a two-headed ogre at the top of our stairs rather than letting that wizard get their eyes on us. We knew that they, they had it out for us, that wizard friend. But that's okay. Ah, too bad. Promising start. These things definitely happen. And we do learn from this mistake. We did make a mistake. Uh, or we had an issue that we could have resolved, could have not ran into. And that's good. That means that we're learning, even with a death. That's the most important part to take from any loss in this game. Take it apart. Dissect it. Go far enough back so that you might find the the kernel seed that grew into the disgusting situation that we ended up in. And that lasted a long time, as long as we could possibly draw it out. Got some lucky rolls even. That's the thing. We got very unlucky with that wizard, but the magical way that we managed to escape that wretched star, that was some pretty good luck. So, Lady Luck, she giveth and she taketh away, as it were. And we're just here to uh, do what we can, do whatever we must. And we start off one more time today. That's what I'm going to insist upon. It's just going to be this one, and it's going to be a victory. I know it. We could try and switch it up. Maybe even go for like a berserker and lean hard into an alternate strategy here. But I am a fan of being able to try out some other deities on the Pantheon. Even if we can maybe get Gozeg, one of my favorites, that might be nice. I will probably take Okawaru again as well. In that case, we could go with Monk, get slightly more well-rounded stats, slightly better PD on joining our friend. Let's do it. Let's keep changing it up a bit. Stay flexible, stay agile. Try out a Monk this time. Though, of course, that only goes so far. I'm still going with axes, because I do like me some axes, even if it's not the, uh, the optimal situation here. And if there are any suggestions for name in chat, I always love taking suggestions from you lovely folks. But if not, I think we might go back to the, the Trotter lineage, as it were. We had Harry Trotter, who tried their best to go through. And I might keep adding on to that. 
holy roller we already had one holy roller unfortunately and we try our best not to uh, use the same name a couple times in a row but i do love it so uh if you have any other suggestions in that vein i definitely agree with your uh your mindset i think you're you're heading in the right direction i like it But if we are continuing the Trotter line, I was thinking something like Beatrice Trotter is a, a good literary reference. We could go for the entire Harry Trotter family, go with something like James Trotter or Lily Trotter. Hmm. Unless there's a, another idea right away here. Maybe Lily Trotter. <laughs> Roland Trotter? I'll, I'll take it. Always happy. Oh, and took me a second. I see what you did there. Yeah, I love it. Let's combine both of our namesakes here. Roll and Trotter. And we'll head back in. Let's do this one last time. Start training axes right away. Turn off dodging and stealth. This time around, we'll not have to worry about shields immediately and can get a good amount of uh, training done in our weapon skill. Try and get to that Mindalay as fast as... Pangolin, pangolinly possible? Is that the best way to say humanly possible in this case? We want to be appropriate for good old Roland here. And of course, because this run is going to be the luckiest in existence, I'm seeing like a D2 Black Knight's Barding or something like that. We'll definitely pop the seed up. You just gotta. We gotta give everyone else the opportunities that we're going to run into today. Copy that over. Copy, copy. Roger, roger. There we go. Seed on the screen. There's the luckiest seed in existence. I will it to be so. And here we go. Cool opening layout. I agree. I really like a lot of the starting vaults here. And in fact, we've been getting pretty lucky in that regard. I liked the foresty glade that we saw last run as well. Thought it was pretty sweet. Um, I want this dart frog, or dart slug rather, to come to us. There we go. Perfect. And with a monk start, we have a few things that are a bit more straightforward here. One of those being that almost any piece of armor we run into early on, we can immediately pick up and make good use of. And of course, a D1 Okawaru shrine would be pretty sweet. We want to get up to, if we go with Okawaru, of course, we want to get up to that gift-giving PD level as soon as we possibly can. Come to me, friend. Perfect. And see a staff. Might as well check it out. If it was a staff of poison, that might be something that's worth picking up right away. A D1 null. How about no? No, thank you, please. Endoplasm will lead away back here. Fortunately, this is an enemy that can't shout, so we don't have to worry about it waking up the null. But fighting it will create a decent chunk of noise, so we will run to safety. I did briefly talk about the fact that we keep snubbing the faded altars. How are we feeling about a faded altar? There's a chance that we lose out the advantage of our monkness here if we find or if we end up worshiping one of the is it three deities that don't care about piety i'm thinking zom gozeg uskaya i could be missing someone there especially since i don't have the greatest grasp on each and every one of them i guess ashen zari just has the the curse mechanic right but regardless few of the the deities could make waste of our double piety here and that'd be too bad not only that but even if we just got a deity that's not at all compatible with roland we'd be wasting out on this wonderful name hmm any strong feelings in chat today? Do people want to see a little bit of zaniness after the uh, unfortunate runs that we've started with? We're not going to be missing out too much. It seems to be just in the general trend of things. I'm definitely happy to, to try it out. But otherwise, maybe we'll leave it alone for now, pending 
the uh, chat consensus. And we will instead just keep moving on. Okay, do you want, let's stop. Just stop. Maybe we'll block this off so we stay away. You're always tempted, but it rarely works out. I'm definitely a pretty big fan of zany play and just rolling the dice on something silly, so I definitely feel you there. But the issue with it is just this wonderful name. I do not want to run or roll Roland here into an early mistake when we could have something truly wonderful happen. <laughs> 